So we'll call this meeting to order at 6.35, it looks like, and I'll read this little paragraph that I love to read every time. Proceed to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. The instructions below. No in-person no in -person attendees of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. I'll just do a roll call vote. Liz? Here. Victor? Here. Ben? Ben, are you with us? Hello? Oh, there you are. Hey, Ben. Yeah, here. Hello. Yeah, I, I had to step away earlier. Like, my son's package got stolen, so I had to, like, talk to the police right then, so. Oh, sorry to hear that. That yeah. sounds intense. Yeah. Yeah. And then I am also here. Come up here. <laughs> 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 it's always so weird on the <laughs> attendance part of it, but <laughs> got to refer to myself in the third person. Yeah. Uh, next on the agenda, we have uh, reports and comments. So we will open it up to the public, which I believe there are no attendees, but we will open it up. No, no attendees. All righty, so then we'll move on and we'll go to HRC reports. Uh, Ms. Haygood, I know that you had a report on the housing, is it housing trust or? It's the housing trust. Okay. So I, I, you know, had conversation with Sid. I wasn't able to go to the meeting because I had a prior commitment for this month. Um, so I spoke to Sid. He wasn't actually at the meeting, but he did report that they're still working with the town to try to find more affordable housing for the people that live and grew up and work here in our town. Um, and he informed me that there was a vacancy on the housing trust committee. So I am in the process of talking to my husband to see if about um, actually joining that committee as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that would be great to have someone on this committee on that. But of course, if your time allows, that would be great. Um, I want to circle back and maybe put it on an agenda item because I literally just went to a town event for the school and was there for a total of maybe 20 minutes and had about five different conversations about housing and uh, the unfairness of policies and procedures going to apply for Section 8 in within town and different various means like that. I know that this committee has taken on housing as an issue. I just want to see where we are at and where we want to move at as a committee also. But that could be for a later conversation. Um, another report that I have is from the CSSJC. I am a committee member on that. That's the um, Community Safety Social Justice Committee. And after this committee had filed the complaint against the police officers in the July 5th incident. Um, the CSSJC sent out a letter to the town to get into a town hall meeting. The town hall meeting occurred on August 5th. And there the town gave um, reports and different things that they did to investigate into the incident. I believe, and correct me if, some, if I'm wrong, Ms. Young, um, that no police report has been, or no complete investigation has been finalized, but that is coming down at some time, yep. And also I sent out that email to this committee on the DEI report that Ms. Young prepared. So there's a lot of moving pieces to that. And I think I, can say a lot, but I also will leave that to this group if they have any questions or want to say anything. I don't have, 
but I did read um, the report and the, the thing that bothered me a little bit is that they kept using abuse of power, but when you filed, you did not say abuse of power, you said abuse of authority. And I'm wondering um, if there's a difference. I, I, for me, it seems those two words are very different to me. So um, for them to say that there was no abuse of power, fine, but, but that's not what our charge was. I thought our charge was abuse of their authority. So if somebody could clarify that for me, that would be great. Maybe Pamela. Mm. So I, I think that the legal terminology is uh, equates the two, um, or they're very similar. And the definition that I found through the um, Department of Justice uh, used abuse of power as opposed to abuse of authority. So that's why the terminology was included. Okay. Victor, Ben, any comments? On the report, yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot of issues with the report, to be honest with you. Like, like, the, like the, the, the piece that bothered me was that like them citing the mass general law dealing with uh, teens under the age of 18 operating motor vehicles when they clearly weren't operating a motor vehicle past midnight because they were waiting for AAA and a parent to come. So like, I don't, I don't know. It, it to me, it kind of had like, I don't want to go to the extremes, but it kind of had like the, the Trump in Charlottesville talking about there's good on both sides. Like, like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I thought they could have worded that part differently. You know what I mean? It, it just seemed like a justification for the action, but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I think that's a valid point. Because yeah, in my estimation, like their, their sole job, and it, it should have been like communicated to them and, and there should be some retraining definitely based on this, but like their sole purpose at that, that point, it, it's a broken down vehicle. So yes, there was the, the noise complaint, but they get there and it's a broken down vehicle. Their safety should have been priority rather than this, this like this use of like authoritative power, you know? But yeah, yeah, I, I have feelings, I'll say. <laughs> No, that's that's what we're here for, and that, those are completely valid for sure. I just, you know, and the more I thought about it, I thought there could have been a dialogue that went something like, "We received this noise complaint. You know, what do you, what's going on?" And the students responded, however they responded. Again, I don't know what happened before the tape started rolling, yeah. and I can imagine the police officer saying, okay, you're waiting for somebody to tow the car, but because you can't drive right now, um, I'm gonna call a parent and I just want you to keep the noise, there's been a noise complaint, if you can just keep it down until all of that happens. And it, that would have, I think, squashed everything. And again, I don't know what happened before the tape started rolling, but I could just hear a different way of approaching that whole situation. And that's what I think that Ben is getting at, where mm -hmm. we have some teenagers, yes, they're out at late at night. Apparently either one or two of them were driving, maybe one, I don't know. Um, so yeah, okay, you can't drive. Let me call a parent to come pick you up. And in the meantime, if you can just keep it down a little bit, that's all. Victor, you have anything? I think overall, as just kind of another young person, I'm kind of enraged with like the whole situation itself. So sometimes when I look at the report, it kind of undermines what actually happened, even though it kind of does explain the kind of overall actions, both parties, the like kids and what the police officers took. I feel like there's more to it both the influence included with the police officer as well as kind of the attitudes of the young people in the video that the report doesn't really talk about but I guess I don't know I don't I've never written a report so I don't know what you really would include but I'm not sure yeah, thank you I think that for me and being a part of the town 
council meeting and being a part of the CSSJC. I'm very concerned with the way that it's being handled by the police because the way that it is being done and I am misquoting or using a very broad quote from Chief Livingstone, but that basically after the, after the event happened, he talked to the police officers and basically the police officer said that he was angry at the time and he used miswords, words and that seemed to be kind of enough until this committee or commission filed that police report. Then a formal investigation started to happen. So without that complaint filed on behalf of this commission, nothing would have got done is what it seemed like as far as from the police department. So I think, go ahead. No, I just turned my thing on. I was waiting for you to finish. So I think that it very much to me seems like the investigation still needs to happen, still needs to be done. The people involved, from my understanding from various people that know the individuals involved, have been contacted, yet have only been contacted by the PD in a way that they would not like to speak to a police officer or the police commission or the police chief in a way that will further investigate kind of what else happened that night. Like to your point, Ms. Haygood, there's minutes before that interaction on the video that we've seen. There's minutes after the interaction that we've seen. All of it, a little bit becomes hearsay, yet none of that is being investigated in a way that is productive and pertains to the overall human right violation that happened. Because a human right violation happened in that video. Kids were told they have no rights by a position of authority. If you switch the roles around and the kids telling the police officer, you have no right. That does not hold as much meaning as it does the other way around with the police officer telling the kids that they have no right. One group knows that they have rights and is sworn in by this town to uphold those rights. Yet that was not done that night. And so I feel as if this investigation is kind of being derailed, is kind of being set off to the side, like, oh, we're just going to forget about it. That school's going to happen. Things will cool down. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to be the end result of the July 5th incident happening and now we never hear about it again. Or everybody has done their due diligence of an investigation in strong quotations. And so therefore, I don't know where to move from here. And I would welcome Ms. Young, your input on this to see where this commission can push the agenda to be reviewed. I know that in our talks last night, we discussed the Human Rights Commission on the CSSJC's committee, that we have the way to have complaints come into the Human Rights Commission and then an investigation happen. How do we make something like that happen to where a police investigation is not the only investigation that's happening because in my opinion, that is not enough. So the way that the bylaws are currently written, a human rights commission can take uh, complaints from anyone in town about um, any of the protected classes or any discrimination, uh, allegations of discrimination. So the bylaws give this commission the authority to do that. Typically what would happen was a complaint would come in and then um, in the past, the human resources director acted as the, uh, I'm gonna say um, investigator or the person who would review complaints um, on behalf of the Human Rights Commission. And um, Jen has shared with me in the past um, that she and um, Donna Keneally, you know, sort of had conversations and went through that process together. Um, I would 
I think, well, I know that the HRC certainly still, the bylaws exist, so you have the authority to to go for it with, your, with the complaint or to uh, uh, seek additional uh, investigation from the police. The legal sort of obstacle that is, uh, that's before the town is that only the police department has the ability to investigate and discipline the police officers. And that is a function of the collective bargaining agreement and the personnel policies and de departmental policies of the police department. Uh, if there were a resident oversight board that, that was envisioned by the working group, then there might be another alternative. But right now, um, from my review of the of the collective bargaining agreement and the town bylaws, the only place those are the only two places where where there is any authority to do that. The uh, uh, Human Resources Commission's authority is somewhat limited in that, um, and I you know I don't recall that you have the ability to have like subpoena power or to hire an investigator. So generally, what the town has done with uh, with those bylaws is seek to have some sort of mediation or discussion with the parties to reach agreement. And that's generally, I'll say that Jen has described this process between um, external parties. So I, I don't know what the history has been if there's been a complaint that's come in against a town employee. The, the situations that she's described in the past have been situations where two people who are involved or connected to the town in some way, one of them files a complaint against the other and it comes to the HRC. So I, I think the course of action would be to seek um, a response. Um, and I think from the police department to the complaint that you have filed, um, it may be to, uh, to seek uh, um, authority to have an inter, you know, an external investigator or someone else to review it. I think this, the situation is a little bit messy now in that once the DEI director role was created, then the responsibility for HRC complaints have moved to this position. And I, I don't know uh, if having a complaint come back, you know, to me to have involved, I think you need someone outside of the current process to, to really uh, assure yourselves in the community that there is uh, equity, impartiality, you know, bringing it back to me again would not seem to be the proper course of action. So I think those are the, those are the possibilities for review um, within the town. We're, we're simply limited by the collective bargaining agreement. And I would, you know, <clears throat> that would be true of other instances. So, so um, of other, town employees who are members of a, of a union, you know, which would include most of the uh, town employees for DPW or, you know, other, other things. Generally, the discipline and review and investigation of, of employee personnel issues for union members is done according to the collective bargaining contract. And um, the, the obstacle is, you know, how do how does the committee work around that or seek other ways of having additional investigation? In the DEI report that was written, um, I uh, the police at that time had sort of presented that they had completed their investigation, but they were aware that they had not gotten information from a number of different people. And so the report was written with the door open for them to go back or for addition for people to provide additional information to the police. So we get, a, you know, the town gets a more complete picture or different perspectives about what happened uh, on July 5th. And I think that they are in the process or have tried to be in the process uh, of doing that. Um, as you've you know, stated, uh, some of the families involved are reluctant to speak to the police. And so 
then again, where where is there a, a place where those families might go? And my suggestion was that they might come to the HRC because that's the I I can think of no other uh, avenue that would exist. So we filed the complaint. Has there been a response to our complaint to you, Philip, or to us as a collective? There has um, not been no response. Huh. All right, I think, you know, we talk about this again and should, um, I don't know, at least they could respond to the complaint. And I'm not sure how many days or weeks they have to respond to. I mean, even something as simple as we received your complaint and, and, and we're investigating is a response. Yep. Won't be one that I like, but at least it'd be an acknowledgement that it was actually filed. And that's another troubling piece to this whole thing. No. Um, and on another note, you know, I went to the little, the gathering of about 200, 300 people. It was a lot of people out there for the back to school event. And I saw, you know, the EMTs and I saw the fire department, but I didn't see anybody from the police department. And I'm not sure if they was invited, so I can't blame them for not being there, but that would have been nice for them to you know, show up with maybe the bikes or one of the horses or um, uh, for, um, the dog. What's the dog's name? I can't remember the dog's name. He used to be at the school all the time. Come on, yes. Victor, help me out. <laughs> so what Winston... Um, Winston, that's passed, the dog's name. Yeah, yeah so what, wait, Winston passed away. Whoa, in the, no. Yeah. So the, uh, the officer has received another uh, puppy that's in training, but there's um yeah. Once, yeah yeah okay. I, think, I think that's a very valid point and i was wondering and i wanted to reach out to you um miss young i just hadn't done so yet what is the appropriate time for a response i know that's not your department or anything but if you so, know so i actually believe that there is a time limit in the bylaw so i'd have to i will make a note to go back and um i can um I, I uh, can share that information um, or, you know, I, I'll have to start, to do, we have to share the information in a way that doesn't violate public right. meeting law, but I will note that the, um, I can inquire, I think there is a time frame that is included in the bylaw. That'd be great. And then I do just want to acknowledge that Juliana has joined the meeting. Yeah, hi, I'm here. Sorry, I'm a little late. That's all right. We're talking about the um, complaint that we had filed with the police department and the response that is being taken by the town. And uh, I sent over some stuff earlier in the month that you should have got as far as the report. So if you have any. Yeah. Any uh, I also just do want to note and I'm, I'm treading very lightly here so bear with me <laughs> and nudge that the report done by the DEI department of the town be revised in a way that is seeming to be less legal in a way that kind of does take away the narrative from the kids and their experience and also in a way that possibly doesn't make it seem like there was a partnership between the police department for that invent like report that was an investigation because that's how I took it and I think that's how many others took it and I know that newspaper articles ran with that and so getting clarity on that that was not an investigation that was a report out by the DEI department I think is needed because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there on that report. Uh, so I, 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 I was, that point was made last night and I will definitely bring it back to the town manager and to, I'm, you know, I'm sure he'll have a conversation with town council about what they would like me to do as far as proceeding is concerned. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything else they want to add on this topic before we move on? No. Let's 
the next shakes. Uh, that was next on the agenda. So then oh, we're moving to item number three B, Calcan HRC support community. I think that is more of an open ended question to commissioners and slash, I would throw in possibly a slash on that community. How do we do outreach for this commission to fill up the vacancies that we have? So may I uh, jump in? Yeah, so um, there are the other two committees that the DEI department is um, staff support to are the CSSJC and the African Heritage Reparations Assembly. And um, both of those groups also have a desire for community engagement and community outreach. So what um, I did not um, have this conversation with the CSSJC yesterday, but certainly have had the conversation with the African Heritage um, Reparations Assembly is to think about ways of engaging the community that would involve um, all three groups, um, because there's uh, some overlap you know, the charges are different, but there's certainly some overlap in the communities that are served. And one of the things that uh, Jen and I are planning is to begin engagement around the resident um, oversight board. So the report was completed. Uh, it's my understanding that there was not community-wide discussions about the resident oversight board, there has to be a decision made about the model of the board and how it would function and all of uh, all of those sort of uh, things. And typically the community would be engaged in conversation about that. So one thought that Jen and I have discussed is inviting members of the three boards to be involved in the outreach um, and engagement in the community about the resident oversight board. Um, one of the things I think that's very important when we go about setting up the community engagement and we're uh, uh, thinking that there will be a variety of ways in which we might invite people to engage. So it would, some may be in person, some may be virtual or hybrid, but, um, and um, trying to think about different times of the day and um, different days of the week to gather the most input um, one of the things I think is really critical is that um, the that we developed a script. So we have a uh, I've sp have had some conversations with the communications uh, director about creating a script that everyone would use, be it, um, as far as like the types of questions that we might um, pose to the public. So and uh, creating a fact sheet about. The, a process. So in my, my vision is that it might be like, uh, you know, the five W's of a resident oversight board, you know, something that really looks at what is it, how would it function, where would it, you know, those sorts of information on a, um, on a two pager so that it, there, there is some information that's provided. I do think, as I said before, it's critical that um, while we're gathering information, there's there is a script that the town really speaks with one voice, and so there's probably going to be a need for us to have discussions as a group, meaning the three groups, about what that script would look like and and how it would function. Um, uh, so that uh, is certainly one way I think in which the board will be able to engage the communities um, and to talk about not only the resident oversight board, but your uh, your vacancies and your charge. Um, so I'll stop there. I, I like that idea of having those three groups come together and doing outreach. Is it possible for this committee, I don't know open meeting laws too well, but for this committee, like the event today, the um, back to school night, could we have had like a tabling event there to just make a public 
appearance. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could have. So, yeah, right, right. So as long as we're not deliberating and talking about like Human Rights Commission business, so to speak, right? We absolutely can do tabling at, at different events. Like, and, and I, I would add like, we, we could do the farmer's market. It's a little late for the Rotary Fair, but like, yeah, we, we absolutely should do those things. But like, I also, I also want to uh, double down on the, uh, like the collaborative effort with the other groups. I, I love that as an idea because we have like overlap in like, duty and function, but also overlap in audience. So, so I like that as an idea. It's my, my two cents. Yeah, that's great. Would um, commissioners be interested in something like that, like tabling? Either at the farmer's market, various events in towns, just kind of gauging like, I don't want to say, okay, let's do this. And then everybody be like, oh, well, I'm too busy to actually do that. So that was a good thought, but it's not actually happening. Yeah, I, I won't. I, I will say that I do like 50 million things. So I'll, I'll say like, if I possibly could, I would, but like take that with a grain of salt because like, there's like 24 hours in a day, but, but yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I actually, I absolutely cannot commit. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> I mean, I can commit to one of the Saturdays of the month if other people can do that. I know that um, our students are now going back to school. They're starting their senior year. I know that, I don't know if Victor's doing football, but I know Juliana, are you doing cross country, girl? Yes, no, maybe? I'm doing volleyball. Oh, no, oh, yeah. You know what? That's a stupid thing, because I already knew that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, if we want to set up a table in, um, at one of the farmer's markets on one of the Saturdays in September, I'm down for that. Um, maybe even October, after that it gets cold. So I don't like cold, I'm just saying. <laughs> Would that um, include the farmer's market, the one um, in front of Mill Valley? Like the little one that comes in on Saturdays from like- Oh, uh, right, right. I, I forget what that is called, if that's a different farmer's market, but I don't see, I mean, we'd have to obviously collab with them to see, but I don't see why not. Does anybody know the name of that? No, but I think that's isn't that run out of the schools? No, 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 that no, that, that's separate. It's the, the mobile market, something. Uh, mobile. Mobile. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's mobile, something like that. I feel so horrible. I drive, I drive um, past it all the time. To get a booth at uh, or a table at the farmers market, where we need to um, ask the chamber of commerce. I mean, how does that work? I'm not sure. We just can't just roll up in there and set up a table. Somebody has to know, right? Uh, I don't know, because I've been seeing people roll up in there, setting up tables outside of the market. So. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say another board I'm on kind of pretty much just did that. Like, uh, it, so I'm on the board for Amherst Media, and that's that's how they've been tabling. So they just kind of gorilla tabled, I guess you call that. Huh. Well, I will actually ask, um, I know, is John Page still on the... Uh... I'll, I'll ask somebody. Maybe I'll even ask Jennifer. Maybe I'll come come and come and dear your office, Pam. You know, because you know how I come up there and we start chatting, and then yeah. an hour later, and no work gets done. But no, just kidding. Yeah. No, so do, Jennifer we, does we know do the do work when we come yeah. up there. When I come up there. Yeah, and Jennifer does know the answer to that question um, because I know that. Um, I, I, the town has acronyms for everything and I'm not going to remember the a acronym, but um, Jennifer, Angela, and Brianna have a role where they are, are um, engaged in community engagement. I can't think of what their title is, but that's part of their responsibilities. And one of the things that they did do was to go to the mobile market. So I know that they will, you know, someone here will know the answer to that question. I just, I don't know it. Um, I, that is also another opportunity to partner with those other two groups, because um, if you have one representative from each of the groups, you uh, you don't have to worry about open meeting law and because, you know, but you still have a little cohort there um, to participate and then you get to spread the word for um for all of, you know, for all three groups. So that's another possibility of a, 
place for collaboration. Um, I, I, I think that there, I don't, I know the CSSJC is, um, does not have an, um, an opening. I think there, that there's not an opening on that board, or, but I could be wrong, but. Um, I believe there is one. Is there opening. one there? Well, then maybe it's the African Heritage Reparations Assembly that doesn't have an opening, but there, at least two of the three does um, have openings. So that would be, uh, you know, another place to, uh, to, to share some oversight, so. Well, even if the CSJC or the African uh, Reparations Committee doesn't have an opening, it's they can still be part of our table to give mm -hmm. um, people an idea of what those committees do. Mm -hmm. So that's, we're not having a meeting, we're explaining what our mission is. And so I don't think that's in violation of open meeting laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either to Ben's point, um, especially if it's only like two of us mm -hmm. there. Uh, I am wary of my time as well, but I do want to see this get moved. So I will commit at least to two uh, Saturdays to the farmer's market. Other than that, I'd have to look at my schedule. Yeah, I can do like pop and be supportive when I can be. But like I, I have like like for instance I have fall basketball coming up so Saturdays are are tough for me but if I have like afternoon games I could pop up in the morning because what what time does the the farmers market end? I believe two o'clock one o'clock one of those. We don't have to be there the whole time. We can be there two or three right, hours. Right, right just um, early So start. we're yep. looking at either I can't do the seventeenth, but I can do the tenth and or the twenty fourth of September. The seventeenth, I'll be out of town. So I think that, let me know. Yeah, I think let's try and shoot for the 10th. So Pamela, if you could have Jen send us um, information and then if the other two committees in town want to join in and set up, that's fine as well. Being on one of them, I guess that's already mean that I <laughs> <laughs> can do double duty there. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. So yeah, if we can make the 10th work, me and Ms. Haygood will be table in there. Try and get okay. All right, I've noted that down as a question, so. Yes. All right, awesome. Um, then we have, uh, oh man, the town really does have a lot of acronyms for everything, but. AHTF, is that the Affordable Housing Trust Fund? That it? Yeah, so we already did that one. The A Arch A A report. So I believe that's the African Heritage Reparations Assembly. So um, a, I, I can give you um, just a quick update that that they are looking at uh, a couple of. Of, of collaborating with uh, uh, UMass and um, another entity on some grants that would um, bring in the possibility of a um, solar farm that would connect to, uh, it's still in the development, so uh, I'm not being able to explain, I mean, I, I can't explain it very well, but essentially, the uh, solar farm would be a business that would uh, be owned by the BIPOC community and might be able to generate funds to the BIPOC community. So they're exploring that as, um, as a possibility and have had some conversations with um, UMass. And, there's a, a, so that, uh, and then there's a second grant that might be um, sort of tied to that initiative through the Robert Woods um, Johnson, yeah, Robert Wood Johnson's uh, foundation. So they're in discussion about that. They're also very, uh, as I said, mentioned earlier, concerned about community outreach because they're thinking about pursuing two different avenues for um, how reparations might be distributed to uh, community members in Amherst. And so 
part of that discussion is around eligibility. Part of the discussion is around um, identifying people who would I, uh, who would self-identify as African uh, heritage. So they're in those ongoing conversations about that and looking at ways to collect both uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, data around those two points. So, but um, so they're just in the beginning stages of, of those conversations. Awesome. Uh, so I can... Yeah, I, I can keep going through. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's what I was going to say. I think that's all going to be you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so with D and I, uh, Jen and I uh, have set a deadline for Tuesday to complete our first draft of a strategic plan that would be both for the department and for the town as a whole. And the so we have. Um, sort of mapped out what would be the strategic priorities for the department um, and they overlap with each of the three uh, committees that we are uh, supporting. In addition, we have um, designed an assessment tool that would go out to other uh, departments in town with the goal of having them do some initial assessment and then uh, uh, reviewing that information so that by the end of the fiscal year, Townwide, we would have um, DEI strategic plans for each department. So just you know, a rollout of assessing and then gathering that information, with a goal of having a strategic plan for the entire town by the end of this fiscal year. Um, so we've set an internal goal of completing our portion of that strategic plan for next Tuesday, and we'll share it with the town manager and get feedback. Um, and then I'll, we'll also share with him the assessment tool and um, sort of roll out a plan to, to issue that out to the, the various departments. In addition, you know, we are working um, and provided the CSSJC with a draft outline for, so I'm going to do two here now, for the resident oversight board that was just shared with that group last night. Uh, it's in the vision is that the timeline for the board to go live would be about 10 months. Uh, a lot of the research suggests that you need a minimum of uh, six months. I think um, that a realistic timeline is, is a, a 10 month timeline we've devoted two months to just community engagement. And if there are other aspects of the of the of the timeline that might go quicker, then you know that's great. So it could maybe be less than 10 months, but I think 10 months is, is realistic thinking about the scope of the work that we have to do. We need to get community uh, involved in the selection of the model. We need to develop policies and procedures. So the um, members of the resident oversight board will have to be trained. The, the town council will have to draft a bylaw and pass it. So, I mean, there's, I think 10 months is ambitious, but I think also, um, I, I think 10 months is realistic. Less than that, I think would be extremely ambitious. So we've gotten started on that. I just have a point of uh, question or just a favor on your end. Can you send the oversight um, plan, oversight board plan to this group? Mm -hmm. Yep. So that way we can look at it ourselves as well. Yep, we can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so uh, with uh, Cress, the um, Cross responders are finishing up their final week of training. There is a plan for them to go live on September 6. They have met with the other law enforcement uh, uh, units in town to talk about the types of calls that they will be um, uh, addressing. Um, and they expect there to be, as Earl has sort of said, a soft rollout. So they're going to start fairly with fairly limited number of calls and then over time as they build capacity they will take on take on more he is hoping to hold fridays as a basically in service day so that the uh, responders will have an opportunity to be together in large group and debrief and you know learn from that ex experience um uh so you know he's obviously very excited about about that process they 
um, are now have uh, an opening for a responder. One of the initial eight people who was selected to be a responder um, is, uh, you know, no longer part of the program. And so they have an opening that they're going uh, to hire for that person. And they do believe that they have, you know, they've had a lot of interest in the position. So they think that they'll be able to make a good hire fairly soon. In addition, they are hiring an implementation manager. Part of the, the grant that created CREST was re required that there be a support from the mental health component. And so they're, um, they are hiring um, someone into that Im implementation manager role who has that back, who has some background in that area, I believe. So, so they're, they're working uh, um, on that hire and I, I think that's it. I might have missed something else, but I'm sure that I can reach out. To Earl prepared a one-page report for the CSSJ, and I can send that. I'm sure to this group as well. So, yeah, thank you. I was going to ask if you could send that. Is there uh, any way or possible? I guess this might be an Earl question that we can have him just kind of come to this group. Mm -hmm. next meeting to kind of give us a report out as, as to how the first month's going, how things happening in town. So I would, so your next meeting is going to be um, September 22nd. Is that right? I got to pull up the calendar. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I would um, send him an invite, but know that in that first month of implementing and going live that he's feeling like, you know, he needs to put his attention um, to the work, but I, I, I think he would, um, you know, if he's available, I think the answer would be yes. Okay. Um, one thing that, um, that Earl and Jen and I have talked about is sharing the responsibility of staffing the evening um, uh, commission so that, you know, not no single person is responsible for multiple evenings during the month. So we're we're going to try to get a, a schedule going and, and rotating. I've done the last two primarily because I think I needed to be at both of the of the last two meetings. Jen was away, Earl was busy, and so for the last two meetings for this group or for all three groups, I've been the the contact person. But I it's likely that someone else will step into that role you know, at the next meeting, it might be Jen and then, you know, but yeah, it can extend an, an invitation for Earl to, to come. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Thank you. Our next meeting is the 21st. Okay. That's the Wednesday. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Anybody, any commissioners have any questions for Ms. Young on the various reports that were given? I don't just to say thank you for being thorough and we appreciate you being here to give us those reports. Uh, welcome. Yeah, I'll echo that as well. Next on the agenda is membership quorum. I don't, I don't recall why that was on the agenda. Either Ben or Ms. Young, was it just that we need more members? Yeah, believe so. <laughs> so no, like, I, th I think we actually do review that like every year, like like what constitutes a quorum, but it's right. not really that deep. Like it's it's what's here right now constitutes a quorum at this point. I know that we uh, Jen and I met earlier uh, in the week with um, uh, members from Amherst College. And I think in the past that there have been members from the colleges who have students who've, who've sat on this commission. I, I, don't, I don't know, but. Yeah, yeah, there was one when I first came on, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, that might be another opportunity to, um, to draw from this you know, college student population to have, uh, a mem have members from any of the three colleges in town, so. That'd be, that would be good. How would that outreach look? Are we able to send flyers or I don't want to say table. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. so one of the things, um, and I'm 
going to be attending there is we have a contact person for Amherst College so there I know that there's someone that we can um, can connect with and that that person would um, would be able to get the information out to the Amherst College students next uh, Friday I believe is the community breakfast at UMass Amherst um, and I will be attending that event on behalf of the town as well as I think another of other uh, town staff as employees so that I don't have a, a contact at UMass yet but that might be the place where I might learn of a of a contact and um, and Hampshire College actually had is having their welcome event um, tomorrow between uh, I think noon and two I am unable to attend but I know that um, Angela is going to attend and I think that there are also some district um, uh, some counselors who may be attending as well so I can ask her to inquire about a connection at Hampshire College uh, she did share with me but that um, to her knowledge this is the first time that Hampshire College has reached out to the town to uh, to have a town um, uh, members and staff attend their welcome event for new students so we can at least inquire from those from about that yeah that that would be good and yes i i would not be able to attend that event tomorrow but if any commissioners are able to and willing to just even going around and talking that'd be great i know school starts for our high schoolers so that's going to be out of the question but I get it. Um, yeah, and then I do know that UMass is having a uh, event series. I believe it starts on the 14th with their, uh, I think it's like uh, OEI office. I'll look into that and see, maybe send something out. But yes, if you know anybody that wants to do this type of work now is their time to shine and join this committee <laughs> all right and then we vaguely talked about this in the beginning but the retreat um i don't know if anybody else has notes on the hrc retreat as to what day was finalized whether that be was it the second or the ninth if that's in question one of those two Sundays we're looking at doing a retreat. Ben, you weren't here the last time for that meeting. Do either of those days work for you or work better for you? Second or ninth of, of October. October. Right. They're both I put Sundays. It in my calendar for October 2nd. I put it in my calendar book and I put it in my calendar on my phone on October 2nd. So I, I'm sticking with October 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought we wanted to stay away from the long weekend, which was the night. Oh, that, that's that. true. That's true. Yeah. I do remember that. Yep. Does October 2nd work for you, Ben? I mean, I'm kind of touch and go until I have like a schedule. Okay. But yeah, I, I mean, I could, I'll tentatively pencil it in. <laughs> Got it. And, and hope that I don't get scheduled for, are we doing it in person? Yes somewhere that's the other once thing. in library oh, I, well, don't library. Know. I don't, I don't yeah, know we, yeah i was gonna say we've typically done it at months in library that's that's kind of weird I, I don't know if jen has the end on that or not but, but. jen has the end on everything related to <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so. jen is jen yes Yes, I do know that it's in person. I have no idea location wise where that was going to be. But yes, we can say, I think almost, I'm going to say Miss Haygood's book is good enough for me because if you put it in there, I know you're taking notes <laughs> October 2nd. <laughs> and time wise, we'll figure that out and we'll see. Uh, ben. UI and uh, Jen and Miss Young can connect and mm -hmm. what works in that way. 
Yep. I know, Miss Haygood, you did say that you wanted it to be in the morning. Is that what you were saying earlier today? I would like it to be. I mean, the thing that I have to do in Boston is not a, a must. It's more of a support for someone who's doing some work around a cancer walk. So it's not mandatory that I be there. I would just love to be there for her because I've done this walk. She, she's doing the um, Boston Marathon route. Yep. And it raises money for the Jimmy Fund and cancer research. And I've done it with her in the past. And I just wanted to be there to support her when she finished. But yeah. if I have to stay, if we have to, we have work to do. So, right. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I will say on a personal note, uh, earlier meeting for me is great rather than a midday or <laughs> later on. Yeah. So. Yes, that's what we've typically done is had it like the, the first half of the day. Yep. And then you have lunch and then you go your separate ways and. That sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah, <laughs> especially the lunch part. That's my favorite part of the retreat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like the vision board concept, but yeah, it's like, yeah, like sandwiches. <laughs> awesome. All right, and then next on the agenda, we have upcoming events. Uh, for the month of September, there are International Day of Peace. Did anybody take that on for a post? Uh, yeah. Awesome. So if you could just make sure to get that in sometime before the 15th. Yeah, great. I got that already. Oh, perfect then. Awesome. <laughs> on top just of remember that this Friday, the 26th, is Women's Equality Day. Yep. And I sent a uh uh an email into Jen with a short write-up. Um perfect. and she can edit it any way she'd like because I'm not like that. So um yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. I think that that's important. And also, while we're on the conversation of uh, posting on Facebook, maybe we should post about some vacancies on there. I don't know how many people are actually looking on that, but we do have a, a good following there. When we put out the statement, it seemed to get a lot of traction and a lot of shares. So we can put that on. I think we don't have access to that, Miss Young. So I don't know if that falls on you or Jen. But yeah. if I could go up there on social media, that'd be great. Right. Oh, this is great because I'm I'm gonna um uh all of my questions so far are asked Jen. So I will <laughs> I will <laughs> I will ask Jen. <laughs> That's a busy morning tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> and then uh myself, Victor, and Jen are working on a Latinx Heritage Month. Victor, there's gonna be a uh email coming your way a meeting for idea to get that rolling but we're looking at an october date sometime in between the first and the 15th because that is when the celebration is but we will finalize that and get that out to everybody um and see what happens with that event it's going to be more like the um juneteenth event that we put on with the town um the food I definitely want to get some salsa happening with the salsa in the park people and different things like that. So we'll see what we come up with. And you should also talk to um, Ms. Guevara. There yeah. is a, a group of Latina women that um, I know that they're teachers actually and oh. people that work in the school. And they have a group, Ms. Guevara, um, Alicia Mariana. Um, um, who's a Spanish teacher that's married to Mr. Shaw, Marty Vicente, um, and some others are part of that group and they do performances as well. Oh, that's and awesome. Course, you can also talk to Nick Shaw about maybe getting some of the kids from Bomba involved with that. Yeah. Yeah, if you could send me an email, Miss Hager, that'd be great and I can reach out to them and see. Perfect, thank you. Um, prior, I already talked to some of the students from Bomba and they said that they're interested in helping out. We just got to reach out to them about like Perfect. a time slot or something like that, we can figure it out. That's great. Love it. Then October, let's see, our next meeting that will be the 21st. October, there is a long list of things mm -hmm. of awareness month, so celebrations. I think that for the sake of time, since this list is pretty long here, why don't we try and connect offline in a way that does not 
promote or violate open meeting laws, but if anything jumps out to you from this um, agenda that you really want to take on, you just send it to Jen that you want to take it on and uh, possibly CC me or Ben or the both of us. Um, then we can make sure that those all get taken care of. So we have Bullying Prevention Month, Domestic Violence Month, AIDS Awareness Month, Down Syndrome Awareness Month, Family History Month, Filipino American Heritage Month, Italian American Heritage Month, LGBT History Month, National Disability Employment Awareness Month, October 2nd is International Day of Nonviolence, October 20th, Spirit Day Anti-Bullying, and October 22nd is International Shattering Awareness Day. And as you can see, that's a long list, and I don't think that and we could go through in that way. So if you could just, anything that jumps out to you, that'd be great. And anything that is kind of left behind, we'll reach out and see if people can take that on. Other than that, other topics that the co-chairs did not permit on any for, for the agenda. Anything else? I did want to circle back, and this can be a conversation for our next meeting. I do feel as if, and Ben and Miss Haygood, if you can jump in because you have more experience than I do on this issue, the town's uh, issues of housing. I know that this committee has taken up some issues with that prior to my joining. What has been done, what can be done. It's been an issue, many community members. I feel like that's a point of conversation that I have often with them as soon as they hear that I'm a part of the Human Rights Commission and the CSSJC or even the Amherst Survival Center. They really feel as if BIPOC families in particular are being pushed out of this town. Yep, absolutely. You know, I know in the past, like we, uh... So when there was the whole situation with the UMass grad students kind of being pushed out of like North Village and all that, not even kind of, I don't know why I said kind of, absolutely being pushed out. So we initially went and kind of like, we sort of played like the fact finding role. And like, so at the time that, that's when we had Matthew Charity, who was like, so he was like a lawyer. So that was probably helpful <laughs> through, through that. But yeah, like, so we had like the ability to kind of like gather like a narrative from the folks that were down there and like like it was horrible but and then like sort of like confront their administration with them you know like like it's, it's probably like the most active thing i've done since i've been on the human rights commission but yeah absolutely like the my personal opinion is that like the the housing issues anywhere we that we can be like helpful with the um the housing trust and those kind of folks that's awesome. But like any time that we can come in and like advocate for our residents, like, I don't know, those, those are like key moments for me. Yeah, completely agree. Ms. Aga, did you have anything else to add? Not at this time. Thank you. So I think if we could just put that on the agenda for a point of discussion, uh, Ms. Young, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I think that we are done and this meeting can be adjourned here unless anybody else has anything else to say. No, we don't need a roll call vote for adjournment, right? Yep. Okay, so meeting adjourned at 739. Peace. <laughs> Thank I'll you, everybody. You Pamela, I'll try to come up there and have a powwow with you and Jen. <laughs>